Hey, what's up everyone? Eric Ross of the Guy with the Eye here, and today I'm going to review the maybe top six things coming from CES, photo, and video related. I'm going to make a video that will come out shortly after uh, about the top tech that comes out, but today we're going to talk about the photo and video alone. Coming in to start this list is the Panasonic Lumix uh, ZS100. Now, why this is relevant is because Panasonic has been doing a great things, especially in the point and shoot, advanced point and shoot markets as they've been coming along. Now, Sony's been into this a lot, but I bring this camera up because it kind of rivals the Sony RX100 line. And why does it do that? Because it actually looks kind of similar. It has the the, uh, the tilty self screen that you could use. But there are cool things about this uh, about this camera that are worth noting that came from CES. And one of the main things I want to say is it's a one inch, 20 megapixel pixel sensor uses a Leica lens typically they work with them a lot 20 to 250 millimeters that's an f 2.8 to 5.6 floating aperture so that variable you might not like as you get to 250 but that's how it runs and it does do full 4k UHD video so you are getting 24 and your 30 frames per second you're not getting three three minute clips compared to other things that I might talk about a little earlier than that so that's also quite to note and it uses a five axis uh, optical stabilization and one of the cool things I want to talk about that they incorporate in this camera is the post focus feature that will basically leave, uh, as you take it after you take a photo will allow you to choose what focal range you want to use what you want to focus on after you take the image now once again that's a blessing and a curse this is her company's before because that technology kind of has failed but also quite the note, I want to say that this is going to be $700 and should be sh uh, shipping in uh, late March of this year, 2016. So definitely wanted to bring up the Panasonic Lumix ZS100. Coming up next is something you don't hear a lot from this company. They have some great products out there, but you don't see a lot of things developing from them. And a lens that a lot of people wanted was a really good prime telephoto. And they got this with the Olympus Digital 300mm F4. So you're getting that, it's gonna be kind of expensive, but if you're onto this system, uh, it's definitely gonna be worth the price for you because I said it's been highly demanded. On an M43 body, it's basically gonna be equivalent, kind of like a crop, of a 600 millimeter F4. And it's gonna retain optimal quality in that way. It has built-in image stabilization that promises of six stops shake reduction. That's pretty cool if you ask me. So Olympus has something that people have wanted and that came out with uh, CES. Obviously into iPhoneography, uh, mobile photography, smartphone photography, whatever you want to call it, Instagram that a lot of people really use for this, Zeiss teams up with Exo lenses to bring out a new line of lenses for your iPhone. So it's not necessarily going to be a case, it's the kind of this armor system that you kind of put as bumpers onto it and it has a screw mount onto it that you can mount these three new lenses that they have. So it's going to use Zeiss glass, but as soon as you hear Zeiss, you know it's going to be pretty pricey. And how is that? So you're going to be able to get a wide angle and macro uh, lenses together for $299, which is really high and ridiculous. And you're also going to get a telephoto alone, not in a bundle for $199. Now the images that come off of this look fantastic, but I always come to question putting glass in front of glass that is already there. Price is astronomical for something like this, but the quality looks pretty good from the tests that they've seen. It'd be interesting to get hands on with the Zeiss glass. One of the biggest trends in CES war drones and everything of that nature. And DJI really has taken the market over in that. You're gonna see some go things from GoPro and everything from this year. But I wanna mention this one thing that really took CES by storm in regards to being drone related, and that's the Unic Typhoon H. And essentially what you're seeing is a six rotored carbon fibered body that looks phenomenal. It flied really well. It, uh, it looked very stable from the footage that they shown with this thing. And they partnered with Intel and basically they really wanted to keep everything with this tracking, automated, follow type of thing. They really wanted to hit on those points that a lot of, user, a lot of users uh, really wanted because some of the things from DJI, uh, it was unreliable. You had a high rate of flyaways on some things without firmware updates. With something like this, they're, they're really trying to go against that, get their 4K drone out there. And it's pretty cool in some of the panoramic stuff that you can look into. So once again, that's the Unic, hopefully I'm saying that right, Typhoon. H. Coming up at number two is the Kodak Super 8 film slash digital camera. So Kodak really is still trying to stay in this game and they're bringing the film game back. They still want to make that. And if you've, and you've seen pictures and photos, this is really one of the most talked about things. Now, the thing that a lot of people are going to be angry about, it's one of the cameras you're basically going to love to look at but not buy because they say the starting price range range from 
$400 to $750. While you're using Super 8 film, actually, uh, you can record up to an SD card. You can record audio at the same time onto this thing, which is phenomenal. And you will actually have a digital viewfinder. So that's a big thing for a lot of people and trying to get people back into film. So Kodak, the Super 8 camera, it looks pretty baller. Lastly but not least, I'm not going to dive too much into this, but Nikon pretty much made the biggest splash at this. Canon really didn't do much. They released a new printer and some little things, but Nikon made the biggest splash in regards to camera wise. You've heard about the Nikon D500, the APS-C, the best APS-C camera made uh, that's going to be $2,000, shoots 4K video, kind of. Uh, in a weird way, it has some flaws to it. And they've also released a new flagship camera for $6,500, the Nikon D5. Once again, I'm not gonna break a lot of those down. I've already made separate videos about those. Look at those down in the description below. But they have been the biggest talk of the town because that's Nikon finally trying to progress, which they did, but it's interesting to see the cutbacks that they've made. But Nikon, and they had that Key Mission 360 camera. Basically, they're, I guess they're trying to rob the GoPro. We don't know the price of it, what it will be, but it will be shipping out this year, and it has two lenses on both sides, GoPro-like, and it is basically waterproof up to 100 meters or something like that. So be on the lookout for something like that. But Nikon, I think, obviously took the cake with this, except the Typhoon thing, that of CES, 2016. So that's all I have with the photo and video tech of 2016. Please let me know down in the comments some of the things maybe I've listed that you were excited about, maybe that you're excited about seeing, or some of the other photo and video tech only things that maybe I have missed or maybe that has stuck out to you even more. Maybe you've already pre-ordered some of this stuff. Who knows? Let me know down in the comments below. It'd be interesting to see what you are excited for. Eric Ross, the guy with the eye. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe for more content. Once again, I am going to have a video out about the top tech Everything coming out in 2016 as well from CES. Please give this a like, share these videos, have a great one.